what yeah. up, dudes? What Love up? Them. It is episode seven of the greatest iCarly podcast in the world. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. <laughs> Praise be to God. It is If I Was Carly, episode seven, I Scream on Halloween. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait, oh. I need to derail us already. Because oh, Jesus. I saw a TikTok yesterday. I had the spirit in me, but go ahead. <laughs> it was this TikTok yesterday. This guy was like in a brown suit. And the caption was like, me when I was 10 years old, visiting a black church for the first time. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some people will that I'll be 11 come May. <laughs> That's actually really funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All Shout right, back to, to business. Time. Back to business. Episode seven, I Scream on Halloween. Yes. Is the Halloween episode, first season of iCarly, obviously. We got a lot of good stuff here. Let's jump right into it, Kellen. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so before we get to the episode, what was going on in the world on October 20th, 2007, when episode seven dropped? Here we go. Okay. First song is, unfortunately, still cranked out by Soulja Boy. Yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> It's but, such a good song. I hope it remains for the next 15 episodes. Yeah. It's really, timeless. Out of any other... Good. My bad to cut you off. It, out of any other song that we hear in, like, the top song of that week, this is going to be the only one that still matters. Yeah. Like, Big Girls Don't Cry is, like, such an irrelevant piece of we shit do. by now. Yeah. It's over. Oh, this website lists... Uh, okay, so top one overall is Crank That. Top one in the UK is About You Now by Sugar Babes. No idea. Doesn't matter to me. Mm -mm. Um, but, okay, a lot of these are shitty, but the number one R&B song is Bed by Jay Holiday, which is a banger. Banger. He was banger. a one and done -er. I don't. I don't remember much from old Jay Holiday. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you need, though. Hey. Just hey. Got plenty of people through. Top movie though, Thirty Days of Night. Did you ever see that? No. I think it's about zombies. Thirty Days a Night or Thirty Days of Night? Of Night. Let me look it up real quick. Thirty. Oh, days. vampires. Okay, that sounds better. Oh, I do remember. I do remember this movie. I don't know if I saw it, but I remember the cover. Yeah, I feel like I saw some of it because some of this seems, but I for sure haven't seen. It may have been too scary. I may have abandoned it for being scary. That makes sense. I'm interested to see what it is next week because of uh, Halloween, actual Halloween. Yeah, we'll see what comes out. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Um, in the MMA world at this time, UFC 77 had happened. Mm -hmm. Anderson Silva's rematch with Rich Franklin. He defended the belt, still the champion. Tim Sylvia also defended the belt, still champion. Okay, okay. Or no, 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 I'm wrong. Tim Sylvia had a title eliminator with Brandon Vera. So after this, he fights for the belt. Okay. A lot of good stuff, though. UFC 77, it was in, where was it? Cincinnati, Ohio. Good stuff. Never Anderson, Ohio. Anderson, the spider Silva, Callan. Big fan. Big, big legend. Big legend. <laughs> big legends. Let's get into the episode. What What do you rate this one before we start discussing it? Controversial, but I feel like it's a five. Yo, yes. Yes. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> so good. This is their best one by far yet. They like really found a groove with this one. <laughs> yeah. This one had multiple good laughs. It was a funny episode. Yes. It, I don't know if it was scary, but maybe for a kid, they hit on that aspect. Yeah. Uh, it had everything I liked. Spencer got got his, got what he deserved. <laughs> we'll get into all of this, but I liked it. So good. Five spaghetti tacos from both Five of us. Five spaghetti tacos. Ten total spaghetti tacos. Incredible good stuff episode also, go ahead i'm sorry oh i was just gonna say spencer 
is the hottest he's been so far in this really episode. yeah see i think he looks younger in this episode and i've said this before but like i don't think they they had to have shot the first season over a year yeah because <laughs> spencer does look younger in this one i don't know what it is to me he looks it's his hair is a little longer maybe that's a it brings out the uh the baby face in him he's very hot in this episode let the record show spencer's hot all right yeah all right that gets, that adds a point to the spaghetti taco rating we're at 11 ta- spaghetti tacos 11 tacos <laughs> The uh, so the show begins with Spencer talking to himself about a checklist for carving a pumpkin. The more yeah. I watch this show, I realize Spencer does talk to himself often. Yeah, well, I feel like they he has to be involved, but can't always be with the kids. But like, they're not going to introduce another adult. So. True. Well, yeah, we get to that later. We clearly see they're still not around in Seattle yet at the time. The adults of 18 and over in Seattle is fighting the war somewhere else. It's just a city run by kids. What's that book where, like, there's an island run by, it was like Lord of the Flies? Yeah, this is Lord of the Flies. (laughs) Yeah. So it begins, uh, Spencer's getting the checklist ready, getting ready to carve a pumpkin. Carly walks in the apartment and says, and asks, where is said pumpkin? Yes. She sees he has all the tools out. Where is, where's the pumpkin at? Big question. Spencer replies that Sacco is bringing the pumpkin. His buddy, Sacco. This is our first introduction to Sacco. No, it's not. It's our second. True, but no, the last time it was my buddy Sacco has a truck, right? Yeah, but we never... It's the same amount of Sako. We never meet him. Yeah, but I think he is uh I think the last time you're right, I guess. They they only mentioned his name like once last time, and I think they said it three times in this episode. It might be the third time because I think he's also mentioned getting his fun socks from Sako. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I got my socks from my buddy Sako. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's becoming more of a character. I don't yeah. know if we ever meet Sako. We don't. Yeah, I don't no. think we do. Now, who do you think created the character Sako? Why do you think that's his name? Curious. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Are you thinking it might be our our boy? Our I boy think this, is a, this is a Schneider creation. <laughs> yeah. I think Dan Schneider has an imaginary friend named Sako. Yeah. Maybe that's the name of his pool. <laughs> this episode though surprisingly lacking in feet it is who did dan write this one no but he didn't write the last one either and there were still feet yeah you're right but no All right. well did not write this one so we're i didn't safe for i didn't mind didn't mind yeah, the I next didn't. one that he wrote is episode 10 okay I bet there will be feet. We'll be on the lookout. <laughs> so, yeah, Spencer is saying that Sako is bringing the, the pumpkin. Carly also has a letter in her hand when she walks in that was delivered to the wrong address. It was supposed to be delivered to apartment 13B. Yes. It's our first hearing of that. We still don't know what floor Sp- uh, Carly and Spencer live on at the time, but we come to find <laughs> out. Yeah, they... You see it when they walk around, like enter their um, apartment. There's a big eight. True. Also, how come, like, when you live in an apartment building, your mail's on the lobby floor? She brought it all the way up. Well, I guess mail people probably don't want to walk to every floor. No, but, like, you don't get your mail delivered to your apartment when you're in an apartment building. It's, like, a mailbox, huge mailbox in the lobby. Right. Well, I guess that makes sense, though, because people most of the times have to leave the lobby at some – or leave the building at some point. Yeah, but, like, I'm saying she got the mail, 
in the lobby, then brought it up to our apartment, then went back down to the lobby. True. Yeah. She could have seen it in the lobby and been like, this isn't for me. Yeah. Step number one. Always check your surroundings. Always check your surroundings. Yeah, I agree. If I was Carly, my surroundings would have been checked. If I was Carly, nothing would slip by me. Nothing at all. (laughs) I would do nothing wrong. Uh, So, yeah. Uh, Wrong letter. It's for 13B. Spencer tells her, take it to the lobby and give it to Lubert, our favorite pedophile. He's back. He's back. Sweatier than ever. Yeah. He, I like Lubert in this one. <laughs> so, Freddy, uh, Carly walks out, sees Freddy in the hallway. Freddy is in full costume already. Yes. Seems to be a little early for that, but we'll give him a pass. We know Freddy's mom. Yeah. We know the deal. Yeah. This was one, because remember, like, last week, we were kind of questioning. We're like, is Freddy actually retarded, or, and his mom has a point, or is his mom really crazy? Yeah. I think this one kind of proves to us that his mom is really crazy because we hear her behind closed doors. She's like, put the costume on. (laughs) That's unnecessary. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Tomato, tomato. tomato. Maybe it's a little half and half. Exactly. Could be. But yeah, he's dressed like a witch with a giant fake mole. Um, before before they leave, Sako sends the pumpkin up the elevator by itself. This this is the first time to me in the entire show so far that the elevator has made sense. I just realized something because Carly walks out of her apartment and gets like meets up with Freddie and then they walk down to the lobby. And when I watched it, I was like, why the fuck would they walk down when she has an elevator? But now I see. Right. She couldn't have. Yeah. There was a pumpkin in the elevator. She didn't know, but it was coming. Okay. Yeah. It's, all making sense now. it's all clearing up. Giant pumpkin. Yes. That's the only time that it's worth it to have an elevator that goes right up to your 11 year old sister's room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> From the lobby to the child's bedroom (laughs) for pumpkin transportation (laughs) it never made sense before but this is exactly what you would need that for it maybe that's why it was written in (laughs) yeah they knew episode seven was coming up (laughs) so yeah luber uh or carly and freddie get down to the lobby they see or lubert sees freddie's costume and he's offended by the fake mole gets very upset who can blame him? What What did Freddie expect? Yeah, obviously. I would have did the same thing. Um, I wrote that too. When I first saw the wart in my notes, I wrote Lubert cosplay. Yeah, well, because like, that's like wearing blackface into an all-black room and being yeah. like, you guys don't like this? They'd be it's like, what? It's a costume. Yeah, it's, it's a costume. Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Michael Jordan. <laughs> so he gets, Luber gets mad. He's upset. Yeah. Then they ask him about apartment 13B. He says, nobody's lived there for 15 years. Yes. And then he freaks out. He starts speaking in tongues and leaves. He's convulsing on the floor. He takes the whole chair with him when he leaves, too. I noticed that. He just picks up the chair and leaves. <laughs> I think this is another, if I was Carly, I probably would have just stolen something. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's left it unattended. You might as well. Yeah, take something. It's worth it to take. I love to take something. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, even if it's just a pen, it's always worth it. So good to take. <laughs> Stealing things, it's rules. Yeah. yeah. It's a harmless crime. <laughs> it is. Nobody gets hurt. It all gets paid back in the end. Yeah. If you're a believer in the Lord, he gives it back. Amen, brother. Amen. This is a very holy episode. This was. This has ev- it, everything you need. Uh, 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 Carly and Freddie begin walking back up the stairs. They meet up with Sam, 
So, well, no, they meet up with Sam in the lobby. Then they yeah. all walk back up the stairs. They tell Sam about 13B, that they mm-hmm. believe it's haunted. Yes. And then they decide to shoot an episode of iCarly from the haunted apartment. Ooh. Would you ever do drag from a haunted place? Probably not. Um, sure Naeem wouldn't do it. Yeah, Naeem doesn't like ghosts. I mean, we get to this in a little bit, but I guess we could talk about it now. Like, technologically, I don't know if that's a word. The technology aspect of it would be hard to, like, set up. in a, You know what I mean? Most Most haunted places probably don't have working electricity. We need good lighting. It would be, it could be, like, a pre-recorded. People film shit inside of haunted places all of the time. Haunted places. I guess we'd have to find one. I'd be down, actually. I'd want to. Wait, no, we should do this. I'll find a place. Yeah. I'll film. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Haunted episode of Do Rag. Amen. This is where Naeem leaves the podcast. This is where he quits. <laughs> Good. No. Um, where are we? Oh, we are back in the apartment now. Spencer is now carving the giant pumpkin. With How's a chainsaw. Chain I don't know if we mentioned that, but the the pumpkin is elevator sized. It's so big. It's the size of the elevator. I'm it's huge. It's so hard. It is ridiculously big. I'm like watching him look at his tiny little like five dollar grocery store kit pumpkin carver, and then looking back at the pumpkin. He just that stabs it and it breaks. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. He's got the chainsaw out. It's carving away. Have you ever used a chainsaw? I have. Not in a cool way, though. In just a building something way? Oh. Like, I, I've cut firewood with a chainsaw. Like, big logs before you put them on the splitter. Sometimes you'd have to hit them. I used to split a lot of firewood. But I have friends that, like, that's their job is to just be hooked into a tree 50 <laughs> feet up and just cut off branches with a chainsaw. Oh my god. That shit looks crazy. I feel like every time I hear about a job where someone is like lifted crazy high, they also get paid a lot too. Yeah. Well, because also you hear about many people falling in those jobs. Yeah. Yeah. High risk, high reward. Oh yeah. Big money. (laughs) Have you ever used a chainsaw? No. I used a lot of saws though, but like table saw, band saw, various saws. Because I did a lot of wood shop. Interesting. What's the coolest thing you've ever built? In high school, I built a picnic table. Like, you know, wow. like the giant ones. And my teacher sold it, but like, like nobody got any money for it. Like everyone in the class is building picnic tables and nobody got money for it. Because he was like, well, the school bought it. And we were like, labor. We put yeah. labor into you it. You deserve something for that. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You got robbed. So frustrating. Robbed of a picnic table. Yeah. Imagine if I still had it now. Ridiculous. You'd be a millionaire. I'd be a millionaire. (laughs) It only goes up in value. So, all right. Spencer's carving the pumpkin. Uh, Carly has her costume on. They're getting ready to go shoot iCarly in 13B. Sam, no costume. Yeah, that part I was confused about. Why does she not have a costume? I feel like... Like, she never gives a reason. Yeah, they don't even address it. It's not, like, not at all. Yeah. Like, I feel like with the most, like, kind of, like, edgier girls like that, Halloween was pretty big for us, so... Yeah. I think, do they kind of address it through, like, Sam's mom not having money? Didn't they say something about, like, Sam? Sam's mom is poor? I, they didn't mention anything at all in this episode. But, like, even when you're poor, you can still get a costume. Yeah. I didn't like it. Lack of effort from her. Lack and also, effort. if I was Carly, I'm picking a better costume. She kind of – I think yeah. she – like, even outside of the show, I think Miranda herself – could have picked a better costume. 
Try a little harder. I think that was literally the only costume in Nickelodeon. She was like, I'll wear it. <laughs> but that thing sucked. Was yeah. I was a ladybug once. That was, this is my bug costume. But, like, my dad, like, he used to make all of our costumes when we were kids. Me and my brother. He made a ladybug costume. And it was so cute. It was way better than this bug costume. Do you, uh, do you regret not wearing a costume? Like, the, it, was there anything you wish you were when you were younger that, like, now you're like, I'm too old to be a damn... No, I had very cool costumes when I was a kid. Nothing? There's My costumes nothing you could have been? Ruled. I was okay. SpongeBob one year, and kids were stopping me to take pictures with me. Damn. I gotta <laughs> see the picture. Yeah, send the picture of that. Okay. That's going on the show. <laughs> that might be my new background next week. <laughs> no, my costumes were so cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I've told this before on Durag. I was like consistently a football player on Halloween just because I wanted different jerseys. I was like, it's just an excuse to get the jersey <laughs> before <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> so, oh my God. Yeah. That was always the move. Yeah. I, I guess th- I wish I had done some cooler shit, though, just to have, like, cool pictures of it. Because all my Halloween pictures just look regular. It's just me in a fucking McNabb jersey. Or, like, yeah. <laughs> maybe something invisible or something would have been cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, they get down to 13B, or up to 13B. Yeah. Door is locked. They're trying to get in. Sam picks the lock within seconds. Showing showing her true menace abilities. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Gets them right in there. Uh, this is what I was referring to earlier with, like, the technology aspect being hard to do it in a haunted house. But whatever Freddy's working with is so high tech. It's, like, it's unbelievable. He's working with 7G back Freddy's- in 2007. <laughs> making up words he's just blah, 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 blah. Yeah. What? he hits two buttons he's like the show's live in three two <laughs> like it's so hard to get a show set up as yeah it's, it's insane a seven hour effort to get your podcast set up Dude, it's it's, it's insane <laughs> and like we do it in an actual we kind of do it in a haunted house as is but <laughs> it's I mean, the scariest place i've ever been <laughs> it literally is. <laughs> oh, my, I saw uh, a video of Felix drinking the ceiling water. I like. You, you weren't there for that? It. No, I wasn't there for that. I didn't expect it to be so brown. I was like told about it, and I was like, oh "That's disgusting." And then I saw how brown it was. I was like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> dude, I almost <laughs> threw up everywhere when that happened." <laughs> Wait, so the story was. The, the ceiling was leaking, like, fucking toilet, disgusting water. Oh like, a God. slow leak. And we put yeah. a cup down, and then this guy was making noise in the crowd, and Naeem was on stage, and Naeem was like, yo, he's like, I'll pay you 50 bucks to drink this cup of water right now. And I was on the mic DJing, and I was like, I'll put in 30 for that. And then yeah. Kyle, Kyle Reagan was like, I'll put in 20. So we're yeah. like, that's 100 bucks. We're like, drink this fucking shit water. And the guy was like, he picked it up and looked at it. He's like, nah, I ain't doing that shit and set it down. And then Felix came from the back of the room and just picked it up. Didn't even think twice and just drank the whole thing. And then we tried to give him money and he was like, no, no, I'm good. Why? What? Uh, Yeah, he did it for free. And I was like, you know, you're still going like second to last tonight, right? And getting no pussy also. (laughs) Yeah, that did nothing for you. I saw him the other day. I'm like, I'm surprised you're still alive. <laughs> so gross. Oh, my God. For nothing. For nothing. For zero dollars. Zero recognition. <laughs> yeah. it, unbelievable. I mean, he is kind of, like, famous right now. Infamous, really. Hey, people are talking. <laughs> people are talking. The guy was trending, all right? <laughs> he needed to do something. Because since he came on the scene, people were starting to forget. The guy is fucking consistent in his waves. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I'm a fan. Oh, my God. <laughs> Back to the show. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, so within seconds, they're live. <laughs> iCarly's shooting yes. from the haunted apartment. From the haunted apartment. Less than a minute into the episode, the lights shut off. They shut off. They're like, Freddie, turn on the lights. Like, they're not <laughs> watching him hold the camera that they're talking into. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he gets abused. <laughs> he had nothing to do with that, obviously. <laughs> and then they start feeling something on their leg and screaming. This, this part I noticed that I don't know if you picked up on. So they're on the 13th floor. Mm -hmm. Spencer is on the 8th floor. Oh, I noticed. Using a chainsaw. <laughs> and here's the screams over that from five floors away and is not concerned at all. In my notes, all caps. How could Spencer hear from that far up? How thin are the walls? <laughs> from 50 <laughs> feet away over a chainsaw. <laughs> but it, it just makes me concerned about, like, the people in 13A and C. <laughs> Like what is? What's yeah. it like from them? Their perspective? It's yeah. It probably sounds insane. <laughs> Nobody it's gives a fuck. No one, came, yeah. no one cares. No one came over. <laughs> no. So yeah, Spencer's not concerned. Freddie yeah. gets the night vision on, and the show's back live, and then all of a sudden uh, we hear a woman's voice yelling, "Get out!" Yes. Get out. They try to get out. <laughs> Can't get out. Door is locked. This part made me laugh. Sam starts using Freddy as a battering <laughs> ram to try and get out the apartment. She's that part actually made me laugh. <laughs> that was very funny. It's so, like, the voice that you hear, so I don't know if that we mentioned earlier, but, like, they run into an old woman in the lobby earlier, and they try and talk to her, and she, like, screams at them in the lobby, but I feel like her voice is so, like, unique, you know, in Seattle, at least, that, like, they should have known. It's the same woman screaming. Yeah. I mean, it, so it These was... These are my thoughts. It was, no, you're right. It was foreshadowing that you saw that woman. But also, yeah. the, the voice didn't sound all the way like her. It sounds exactly like her. I don't know. <laughs> I understand the confusion. They were scared. Mm, couldn't Lights have been going me. Off. If I was Carly, would not be afraid. <laughs> if I was Carly, I'm, like I said earlier, I'd still be perfect and fearless. <laughs> no, I guess, I guess maybe, uh, I don't know, they overreacted. If I was Carly, I wouldn't have reacted as such. I run into danger, Kellen. Yeah. I run toward the fire, all right? <laughs> I ain't scared of no fucking ghosts. <laughs> Show's back on. Or no, show's not on. That was the last note. Uh, Doorknobs pulled off. Freddy's not a good battering ram. Spencer is back in the apartment. All is good. Pumpkin is carved. Looks beautiful. Beautiful. Great Flawless. work. This is his best art to date. It's quite <laughs> astonishing. It is. Also, just the fact chainsaw on a pumpkin. I'm, I'm impressed. Big fan. Big fan. I like the it. muscle work alone in getting the guts out. True. It's so hard to do in a regular size pumpkin. Yeah, no, it takes a big spoon in a pumpkin like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pumpkin is carved. Uh, kids keep coming up to the door to get candy from Spencer because it's Halloween, of course. They're a knocking. Uh, Spencer has no candy, so he gives out regular household items, such as a six-pack of root beer, yes. box of macaroni, pouch of a tuna fish, carton yes. of eggs, a pork chop, jumper cables, a mm -hmm. coconut, and some ice cubes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, what's the, what's the worst uh, thing you ever received on Halloween? <laughs> I got two that I vividly remember. I don't think I've ever received anything that weird. I did once uh, when I was in like high school, like probably 10th grade. I went like I was walking through my neighborhood to go meet up with my friend at her house to go trick or treating. And on my way, I like hit up a couple houses and I lived on a military base at the time. And like to live on a military base, you are in the military, like you're an active military, like there with your family. 
and this like super old couple who like there was no way that they could have been in the military opened the door and invited me in and i went in and was like hanging out with these like complete strangers who like should not have lived on base because there was no way realistically that they could have uh so i didn't get anything weird but i do sometimes think that i died that night you know yeah i've i have many questions but i i don't think you have answers i don't know <laughs> who were they why didn't you ever know. look into this further yeah no idea i don't know <laughs> they were so old <laughs> interesting <laughs> i remember getting an apple one year on halloween and then my mom was like, we have to go back to this house every year. And I was like, I don't want to keep going to this house. I don't trust uh, produce from strangers' houses. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. That's... I want something wrapped up. Exactly. <laughs> but she kept making us get the apple. And then I remember one year a guy gave us batteries. And then I don't think we ever went back to his house. I feel like that's a better one than apples. Batteries are expensive. I wasn't mad at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a controller that needed batteries. You'll find use for him eventually. Exactly. <laughs> but so the, uh, the kids are getting upset with Spencer here. Yes. They tell him they'll see him soon. They'll see him later. And they do. They do. They roll back full posse. <laughs> Uh, try and get in. Spencer locks them out. <laughs> then Lubert commits a crime. This part made me laugh too. He unlocks <laughs> the door for a bunch of children so they could just admittedly beat up Spencer. <laughs> Not a single adult aside from this pedophile to be found. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the pedophile and the old lady that can't hear. Yeah, they're like, let's do it. <laughs> just let the kids roam free. Do whatever they want insanity uh then we cut back to sam carly and freddie they're hiding out everything's going bad things yes. are not going good then the old lady wanders out and her son shortly walks in right after this mm -hmm. part confused me because he seems to unlock the door when there is no doorknob on the other side so can a door open if one of the knobs is missing? I don't believe so. I think it's all one thing. Interesting. Like, obviously, it can come apart, but I think they need each other to work. Yeah. Actually, well, the next no, one no, it doesn't. It does not. Because my old, my old house, the bathroom doorknob came off. And I remember, mm -hmm. I thought I was locked in. But you can, uh, you can grab... Like, it's a bar that sticks through from the other doorknob, and you mm -hmm. can just grab that and turn it and push. And yeah. Then, yeah. Like, there has to be something, because yeah. doorknobs get loose. Your doorknob was loose. Yeah. I think it depends which side of the knob falls off. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, you... like if the side that falls off is what the side that you lock from? Yes, because that's the side that has, like, the bar that goes through the thing, through your door. The other the other knob just attaches to that. I see, I see. Yeah. You learn something every day. You learn something every day. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, old lady walks out. Her son walks in. He's like, who are y'all? They're like, who are y'all? And then they start questioning each other. This is the part... I didn't like also that they had so many questions for this guy. Yeah. Like they weren't doing an active breaking and entering. It's his house. Yeah. He's he's like, well, yeah. He's like, well, explain the thing in the closet. He's like, you should be like, yeah, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> Three 11 year olds in here. If I was that guy, I'd be hollering. Yeah. My mom is ill. Clearly you're yeah. breaking into her house. Sam's like calling your like furniture ugly and gross. <laughs> like yeah. you're in the middle of a crime. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it did look like an abandoned place. That furniture stunk. Yeah, it was like literally falling apart. But like, I don't know, it's kind of how old people live. Yeah, let them live. Yeah. Let they got old furniture. Pleases. Yeah. 
I agree. Yeah. Uh, so she answers all the questions. It was a uh, well, the clown head was a phone. That was strange. Mm -hmm. The blood that they found was red hair dye. Yep. The get out and the thumping noises was the old lady attacking a spider with a tennis racket. All explainable things. All explainable. Apparently, the apartment isn't haunted, but there's a lot pointing to it being haunted. Do you you know what I mean? Like, what's your conclusion at the end of the day? I mean, they had an explanation for everything, you know? Yeah, but sometimes people have an alibi, Callan. I don't always trust them. I think... I don't... I think what could have been fun, and I feel like I might be thinking that it's fun because I swear to God, I think that there's a Sweet Life of Zach and Cody episode very similar to this, um, where they go to like a hotel room that is haunted and has been untouched for so long, but wasn't actually haunted. But I feel like having all of these explanations, but then like there being one thing that like didn't have an explanation, you know, that could have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. If true. I, they could have left it a mystery at the end. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. They did kind of wrap it up pretty well. I want a little open-endedness. Not much, but some. I agree. Thank you. I think it, I was talking to somebody about this earlier. I think every sitcom does the same things. And yeah. it's all it, it all bases from like The Simpsons and Seinfeld. And then ever since then everyone's just re redoing those bits. Where, well, it's actually all from I Love Lucy. Thank you so much. No, um yeah, and I'm sure it is. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there was shit before that. Like I always remember the Seinfeld episode where uh, I think it's George like leaves a message on somebody's answering machine and then he's like I gotta get in there and like steal her answering machine so she yeah. doesn't hear the message and I've seen that done so many other times yeah, so, yeah I'll not to sidetrack too much I Love Lucy was like the first sitcom the first one that follows the three camera method that you see where you've got like your wide establishing and then two that are focused on two of the speaking characters um mm -hmm. if that makes sense but uh yeah i was telling ben this because we were talking about how like recording the episode that he is on and how at one point i wanted to mention i think we were talking about the laugh track and i wanted Wait, to mention one how, second like, i'm sorry Callan, I'm sorry. Courtney's here. Wow. I didn't mean to cut you off. Doesn't he live there? Yeah, but he doesn't have his key. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Wow. Remember what you were saying, Ben and the three camera thing. Okay. Welcome back. All right. Nothing happened. We'll edit that out. Okay. All right. What were you saying? My bad. As I was saying, um, I wanted to mention how most of the laugh tracks that you hear on sitcoms were like recorded during I Love Lucy because most of them aren't like filmed in front of a live studio audience anymore mm -hmm. uh, and hadn't been for a while. So most of the audio you hear is I love Lucy but I didn't want to mention it on the podcast because I couldn't tell like I didn't know whether or not um I Carly used those laugh tracks I still don't know but I'm more okay with bringing it up now that I've been thinking about it it would make sense I mean it's clearly not a live audience yeah all that was in front of a live audience though which one all that 
Oh yeah, I believe that. All that was funny. So yeah, yeah. Not saying iCarly isn't, but it was a sketch show. I'm sure all that's audience was heavily like branded toward that age too. Yeah, I, all that was so good. Very good show. Very good show. Real ten out of ten. Agreed. Ten spaghetti tacos. Ten. 10 20 if we're both giving it a 10 agreed thank you let's uh all right let's wrap this one up okay so where were we the apartment's not haunted uh the kids are still in carly and spencer's apartment Mm -hmm. looking for spencer still trying to beat him up he's hiding in the giant pumpkin yeah (laughs) Uh, they they find him they push him in an elevator Take him outside, down into the lobby, outside. Yes. Push him down a hill and into the ocean. Yep, there he goes. Why didn't he jump out of the pumpkin? At any point, really, he could have. Yeah. Like, from the be- when they were first pushing him into the elevator, he could have. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that. I mean, because also, how did all the kids fit in the elevator? True. You know I mean, Sako couldn't was, fit in the elevator. Pumpkin was full elevator size. Hey, James. Hey, what's up? I Carly fam. Hit like, hit subscribe. I brought Taco Bell. Thank you. Smash that <laughs> like button. Spaghetti Taco Bell. Spaghetti Taco Bell. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, and then Spencer walks back in the house covered in pumpkin stuff and water. Yep. Ends yep. the episode with a big, big power quote. Never forget to buy candy on Halloween. So true. Amen. Unless you live in an apartment building in a real city and not on television. Because kids don't come to this damn door. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. We don't know what that building's like outside of it's just full of kids. Chaotic. So it, oh, it would make true. sense. I guess- I guess if your city is full of children. <laughs> well, overall, like we said, this was a 10 out of 10 spaghetti tacos. Brilliant. What's your, uh, what's your Taco Bell order? Um, so I got a Baja Blast. And this is a Fiesta Veggie Burrito. I don't know. My friend mentioned it the other day, and I he said it was new. And it's, you know, it's pretty impossible to get Taco Bell in the city. So they were driving back from New Jersey and swung by. So. What a king. What a king. Haven't tried the burrito though. Brand new. Usually I get a black bean crunch wrap. Hell yeah. I've Hell seen yeah. you at Taco Bell uh, when we were out in Hershey. Yeah. You, uh, you did some damage to that black bean crunch wrap. Of a black bean crunch wrap. What's your what's your go to? Uh, probably the crunch wrap supreme and two soft tacos. Give me some fire sauce. Of course. Do you remember when they got rid of Diablo sauce? Yeah, unnecessary. So I when they got rid of Diablo sauce, I tweeted them a bunch, begging them, begging them to bring it back. And then when they were bringing it back, they tweeted at me, and they were like, "Hey, bestie." We're doing it like you DM us if we can send you something. So I DM'd them and they sent me this like package that was shaped like a Taco Bell hot sauce packet full of Diablo sauce and like a Taco Bell gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're, they're for the people. Yeah. That's that one thing about Taco Bell. Highlight of that year, I think. Hell yeah. When was this? It was either 2016 or 2019. Two good but years. Definitely one of those years. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, shout out to Taco Bell. Shout out to Halloween. And shout out to iCarly. Shout out to iCarly. This was a good one. Kellen, we will catch them next week with episode Perfect. eight. It'll be a good one. Courtney's Thanks. coming on next episode. We have another Yay. guest joining us. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited. Perfect. I'm very excited. Hell yeah. We are Hell out of here. Peace, y'all. Peace.